Okay, so there's a video floating around out there. Uh, 20 questions that the Christian just can't for the life of them seem to answer. 20 questions that are put to us and shape, challenge our faith to its foundation. Make us tremble. Now, I was going to answer... I guess I'll take a crack. There's, there's two or three variations on the, what, the penalty on the cross, how that works. Uh, there's, they kind of repeat themselves a little bit, so let me, take a, let me take a crack at the atonement and try to answer it in layman's terms. Try to ex discuss it in layman's terms so that it makes sense to you, the non-believer. Start off like this here. Okay, you, the individual in life, you are by nature sinful. Now, right away, you're going to, you're going to, if you have been raised fundamentalist, you have been taught this in a way, and most of the, a lot of the atheists I know were raised in a form of fundamentalism that was taught this in a way that they say like, oh my God, you're evil, you're evil, no, wrong. You are by nature sinful. What does it mean? In your carnal nature, you are given over to corruption. Given the opportunity, you are going to do things to please your flesh, you're going to sin, sin, sin. Um doesn't mean you're evil. It doesn't mean you're totally evil, depraved, sick. No, wrong. It doesn't. It just means you are by nature sinful, given over to corruption. Somewhat important to make that distinction. Take it, let's take, for example, a small infant. A small infant has a nature, does it not? Yes. A small infant is, is incapable of acting in any way other than its nature. You put a book in front of a child and say, here, read this. <laughs> Can't you see what it says? It's not going to be able to read it. Why? It doesn't know how to read yet. It's not, it's not an, an infant. You put an infant in a room full of stuff, valuable things. What's he going to do? He's going to break things. He's going to, you know, poop on the wall. He's going to write his name and poop on the wall. He's going to knock things over. You don't put a, an infant in a room full of valuable things. Why? He's, just, he's incapable of acting any other way than as an infant. It's in his nature, Period. Does it mean he's evil? No, of course not. He's a, he's a tiny little infant. Just like it doesn't mean you're evil. You are incapable, without some outside assistance, of acting in a way inconsistent with your nature. You are going to act in accordance with your human nature, period. Forever and always. It's written into your very DNA. It's in nature. Just like the infant. Now, you have an infant. It's under two years old. You love him. You play with him. He's, he's great. You put him in a room full of, of stuff. Really valuable lamps and whatever. Paintings. Monet paintings. <laughs> I don't know. You got Monet paintings in there. And you go away for two hours. Or, all right, six hours. What happens? You come back. The lamp's knocked over. He's torn down the painting. He's written his name in poop on the wall. I guess he's an infant. So, okay, he's just... he's. He's done something with poop on the wall. He's put poop on the wall. Now, he has acted completely and utterly con consistent with his nature. Has he not? Yes. He's a small child. He's incapable of doing anything else. You love him. Do you not? Yes. Somebody's still got to pay for all the stuff. There still needs to be accounting for all the broken things. All the valuable things have been destroyed. Just because he has acted in a way incons con totally consistent with his nature doesn't mean he didn't cause harm. That's why you don't put an infant in a room full of valuable things. Let's broaden the analogy to life itself. You have been placed here on a planet acting in a way in accordance with your human nature. You have done destructive things constantly and almost continuously. God loves you just like you love the child. He's got a problem. I love him. But look at all the stupid things he's doing. <laughs> I really love him, but God, what an idiot. Somebody has to pay for all the things you've done. Somebody has to pay the price. It really occurred. We live here in the real world where real actions occur. And real actions have real moral consequences. Just because God loves you doesn't mean you didn't do it. Doesn't mean there needs to be some type of accounting. A 
And doesn't mean your behavior has not on some level provoked God to anger. You, on some level, have earned yourself a smiting from on high. Yes, probably have. Say last night, God's like, you know, I love the guy, but God, what an idiot. Look at what he did last night. He went out drinking, crashed his car, cheated on his girlfriend. I got to smote him. I got to. If I don't smote him, I'm not just. If I don't kick his, kick his little rear end in, then I'm not good. Why? Because he, he earned it. He's a, he's a stupid little jerk. Look at what he did. He cheated on his freaking girlfriend. His girlfriend's beautiful. I got to smote him or I am not good. Ah, but I love him. <laughs> he's an idiot, but I love him. And he doesn't know any better. Why doesn't he know better? Because he's an idiot. <laughs> he's acting in a way consistent with his nature. Without any outside assistance, I don't know if he could have done any better. So what does God do? God is now faced with the conundrum. I must, I must punish the iniquity, but I love the person who performed the iniquity. I got it. I will take their punishment upon myself. I will punish myself in the form of myself. Now, you're saying, well, it doesn't quite make sense. It's not supposed to necessarily make sense. That's the part where it doesn't matter if it makes sense. Assume, for the sake of argument, that I am actually telling you the God's honest truth. And that Jesus Christ's death on the cross was satisfying God's innate sense of justice. Doesn't make one iota difference if it makes sense to you at all. It's to satisfy something deep inside of himself. Whether you understand it or not, inconsequential. God has to pay the penalty. Somebody's got to pay for all the evil that has been done in this world. And you are incapable of bearing the penalty. Because you didn't know any better. So God sends himself in the form of himself. Now, now you did this. You went and cheated on your girlfriend. Smoke in God's nostrils. I got to act. I got to do something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to haul off and belt somebody. I'm so fed up with their transgressions and their iniquities. I am so ready to throw it down. Don't even get me started. He's got to pour out his anger somewhere, and he's got to pour it out in the real world. Why? Because the actions took place in the real world. Ah, it's a mysterious long, that's a mysterious long conversation unto itself. Just trust me on that one. Just let it go. Let it go for now. It's a, the long one in and of itself. The things that you did, you did. Period. Going to the Old Testament said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. What does it mean? There is no such thing as moral action without moral consequence. Period. You have been given a gift of life. And you have, you have misused that gift of life and used the, the gifts that God has given you to do on some level evil, iniquity, terrible, stupid, ignorant things. You act in an ignorance. So God wants to give you mercy. That's the Bible. Paul said, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance. You act in ignorance. So God don't want to smite you. But if he doesn't smite somebody, it's not going to be satisfied. Aha! I sent Jesus to the cross. Jesus says, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. What cup? The cup of God's wrath. The cup of God's wrath. Jesus took your sins in the flesh so God could smite Jesus and let you go free. So God could pour out his anger into Jesus and you get to walk free. Say, but that's not fair. You don't actually want fair. I don't really think you don't. No, it's not fair. Well, it might not be completely fair, but I'm pretty sure you don't actually want fair. Why? Because you're probably a lot worse than you think you are. You probably are. Most people are. I mean, you personally, whoever I'm talking to, yeah, you could be a nice human being, but you could be Heinrich Himmler and still think you're a decent human being because you just don't seem to notice all the terrible things you've done and you've done them and God's got to punish someone for them and he punishes Jesus so he can let you walk free. So that's the atonement in a nutshell.